What is videotape and how does it work? Videotape is simply a way of recording and playing back pictures and sound magnetically instead of with the chemical dyes of film. There's no processing step with tape. It is reusable and it may be erased and re-recorded either in its entirety or in segments. Included with videotape technology are other electronic techniques. Video magnetic discs for slow motion and freeze frame effects, automatic titlers, special effects generators, and portable cameras. These techniques, in addition to editing, make videotape truly responsive to the creative producer. Broadcast quality recordings, or quadruplex tapes, are made by using what is called the transverse scanning process. Four tiny recording heads mounted vertically on the head wheel rotate at 14,400 revolutions per minute in a plane perpendicular to the direction of the tape motion. In this quad head arrangement, the tape travels at 15 inches per second, receiving the picture information and storing it in sections called frames. Unlike film, the frames of a videotape are not visible to the naked eye, but they are there, 30 frames per second. The quadruplex recorder puts four different tracks on the tape. The first track records the video information or picture. The second records the audio. The third track, called the control track, consists of half-inch spaced blips called frame pulses. They keep the tape running at the correct speed and are necessary for the reproduction of the original pictures. The fourth track is the cue track, which is used to record cue tones or the SMPTE time code used in tape editing. At times, the cue track may also be used for recording the director's calls during a production. Any part of the video or audio track can be erased or recorded separately or together. The three major manufacturers of broadcast quality videotape recorders are the Ampex Corporation, the Radio Corporation of America, and the International Video Corporation. One inch, half inch, and three quarter inch cassettes are classified as slant track recorders because of their helical scan recording process. These recorders are normally used for closed circuit operations or offline editing of work tapes. The newer video cassette models, when used in conjunction with a time base corrector, produce a picture of broadcast quality and are quickly catching on as an essential part of electronic news gathering operations. Now that we understand what videotape is, Let's look at the history of videotape and how it has helped to satisfy the urge of man to visually record the images that form his life and, most importantly, communicate them to his fellow men. Videotape recording, as we know it today, was born in 1956 with the delivery of the first Ampex VTR, the VR-1000. It was conceived as a solution to the problem of preserving creative endeavors of the then youthful television broadcasting industry. It not only solved this problem, but provided viewers with instant replay and has generated $730 million worth of business in its first 15 years. G-I-D-E Tide presents Red Skelton. <laughs> I would like to thank you for allowing me to come into your living room. And this, as you know, is my first televised broadcast. Until the introduction of videotape editing in 1958, the only way to produce images with impact was on film. Such masters as Eisenstein and Griffith helped develop film editing into an art which has become the essence of visual communication. Not until videotape editing began in 1958 was there any other way to edit television programs than to transfer them to a kinescope motion picture film copy and edit according to established film techniques? The first videotape editing was crude because it was limited by technology and artistically was a step backward. Tape tried to imitate the ease of editing film by physically cutting and splicing the tape. Hindered by the inability to see framed visions on tape, early tape editors used an iron particle solution called Ediview. This solution was brushed on the tape and adhered to the magnetic pulses of each frame. The editor looked more like a scientist than an artist as he peered through his microscope to find the barely visible frame lines. He then used a razor blade and metallic tape to make his cuts and splices. With many years of practice, skill, and a lot of luck, 
the editor could make a splice that would hold and wouldn't cause the picture to roll or break up. Ah, oh, darn it. Another bad one. But there was no guarantee. In 1958, at the NBC studios in Burbank, a double system of editing videotape, also known as the talking clock system, was developed. A copy of the original videotape program was made on 16 millimeter film. In addition, a 16 millimeter magnetic soundtrack was made consisting of the program audio and a cue channel. This cue channel consisted of a man and a woman's voice alternately giving minutes and seconds in between a low frequency beep, which was recorded every 24 frames. After the film had been edited, a log or count sheet was made listing all the physical edits made in the film. The original videotape scenes are then cut apart and physically spliced together in conformity with this log. Very interesting. Also very strange. Many award-winning shows and commercials were edited in this manner, including Laugh-In and the Bob Hope comedy specials. And you should see the editor laughing. He's down in one of those cubby holes in the basement, pounding on the wall with a cucumber and yelling, Sock it to me, sock it to me. <laughs> in early 1963, Ampex developed the first electronic method of tape editing. This first editor had no precision control over the edit point. The editor would push the record button as the tape traveled through the machine on the fly, thus making the transition between pictures. There was no preview mode or rehearsal for finding the exact edit point. This left much room for human error and was called punch and crunch. If a mistake were made, the entire scene had to be re-recorded and re-edited. Okay, now. Ready? Ready. All right, come on. Between 1963 and 1970, various companies developed semi-automatic frame-accurate tape editing systems, which are in wide use today. The forerunner of all electronic editors is the Ampex Editech system. By marking an edit point with a beep on the cue track, Editech allows the editor to assemble or insert audio and video information separately or together. Comparable to Editech, but more accurate, is the RCA tape editing programmer. Since the introduction of Editech, several other companies have developed semi-automatic tape editing systems, including the Ampex RA4000, the EECO Time Code Type Editor, and Datatron's VidiQ 5050 system. Semi-automatic, when referring to these systems, means that once an edit point is determined, a slave videotape machine is automatically started, and the picture is transferred at the cue mark, making a perfect electronic splice. These systems all allow the editor to preview a cut before it is made. If the edit point is not correct, the edit can be moved forward or backward, as many frames as needed. Sears is serious about jeans. But even with these editing aids, tape still lacked a major feature of film that producers are accustomed to. The ability to count frames from the beginning of the program material to the end. In 1970, the Society of Motion Picture and Television Engineers initiated a standard time and control code which is recorded on the videotape's cue track and accurately identifies every single picture by hour, minute, second, and frame. The addition of the SMPTE time code to videotape editing has made tape creatively responsive to the producer. In addition, tape editing is sophisticated, fast, extremely accurate, economical, and produces quality images designed for the electronic medium. There are two major manufacturers of computer editing systems on the market today, Central Dynamics Limited and the CMX Corporation. But before we look at the systems, let's see how the SMPTE timecode relates to film and can be of great help to the tape editor. First, a review of film editing. After the initial shooting stage, a work print is made of the original footage. This work print is to be used by the editor to cut, splice, mark, and work on. The editor takes all the scenes and places them in order according to the sequence determined by the director. 
For purpose of identification, each foot of this work print has a continuing sequence of numbers printed along the side of the sprocket holes. These edge numbers, as they are called, are printed on the film in the processing lab. After the film editor has cut his work print to its final form, he writes down his edge numbers, which are accurate to the frame. The film conformer then goes to the original footage and cuts the film according to the exact specifications outlined by the editor without damage to any of the film. Release prints for distribution are made from this final film print. Videotape editing with the SMPTE timecode works in much the same manner. The equipment is different, but the same skills and talent are needed to produce images with impact. As the initial videotape sequences are shot either on location or in the studio, the electronic audio signal of the SMPTE timecode is also recorded on the cue track. This signal is later decoded when editing can be seen on a monitor. In this way, timecode is similar to the edge numbers of film. By transferring our master or original footage to three-quarter cassette or one-inch tape, a detailed program log can be made describing the exact editing decisions made by the creative parties involved. These edit decisions, whether written in longhand or produced on a computer tape, are then referred to the tape production house where the final master is edited automatically. Using low-cost equipment, the editor and director can work in any convenient room making pressure-free decisions. He can see the results of all editing decisions instantly, while the creative juices are still flowing. If you're into the sun the way I am, I've got beautiful news from Sears. Right now, save 20% on a gorgeous selection of swimsuits. One piece, two piece, even bikinis, all sale priced, just 12 to $16. Save 30% on knit tank tops, now just $4.55, and coordinated permapress shorts, now $4.20. Right now, Sears is the place for bright summer savings. Come on in, make some waves. We now must divide editing systems into two other categories, offline and online editing systems. Offline meaning an editing device that allows the editor to build a work print, including all the wipes and special effects that will be included in the final master. The CMX System 600, or light pen editing system, and the CMX 50, using video cassettes, are two such offline systems. Online editing means building a master tape directly as you go in the control room. The CMX System 600 involves the use of video discs, which store black and white pictures and sound information. The editor chooses his scenes through the use of a light-activated pen by touching the screen at the desired edit point. The final output of the 600 is a computer punch tape that corresponds to all edits selected with the pen. This punch tape is then programmed into a computer controlling all the videotape recorders. The computer program tape calls program material to be edited in conformity to those made earlier on the light pen console. This automatic assembly can make an average of 30 edits per hour. In some cases, a splice that would take 5 to 10 minutes using film takes only 10 seconds using the CMX 600. <laughs> In contrast to this, and much less expensive, is the CMX50. This system even allows small studios and producers the opportunity to improve their program quality and quantity while lowering their editing costs. A three-quarter inch video cassette work tape, dubbed directly from the two-inch quad master, is recorded along with the SMPTE timecode. Introduced in 1974, the System 50 utilizes two video cassette playback machines and one video cassette recorder to produce an edited work tape. Corresponding to all edit decisions is a computer punch tape provided for automatic assembly of the two inch quad master tape just as with the CMX 600. A teletype printout showing every edit decision is also produced for future reference. The cost of editing on an offline system such as the CMX 50 is about one-third that of editing on two-inch quad machines.
This bit of animation was accomplished in less than two hours, 100 edits in 12 seconds using the CMX50. In stiff competition with CMX is a group of online editing systems produced by CDL. Known as the PEC-102, it allows the producer computer accuracy in editing as he goes. Here's a demonstration of how this production tool can effectively respond to the creativity of the artist. Let's take a 250 event editing sequence and say we want to do something with scene 104. This editing system displays all of the appropriate information to the editor. In fact, the unique Mimic has 12 interactive displays, which we've highlighted for demonstration purposes. The scene number, the type of edit, video, audio, or a combination of both. The time code of the tape on the record machine, so we know where we are in hours, minutes, seconds, and frames. The time code or position of our playback one machine and the position of the playback two. The time remaining in our production. In effect, an electronic stopwatch. And the type of event, which in this case we'll say is an AB with a 90 frame soft edge horizontal wipe. It's exciting, exactly what we need to know. No more calculating, no more guessing. To demonstrate, let's watch both the sequence being edited and the initiation of the editorial decisions, all in real time. First, the playback one scene is edited into the record tape. Notice we're approaching the wipe transition to playback two. The wipe. through to the end of the playback two scene. Now, let's assume the sequence we just viewed was not quite to our liking. Perhaps we might prefer uh, a dissolve instead of a wipe. We enter changes by utilizing simple one function push button such as start, stop, and record. And in this case, to change the transition to a dissolve, we simply select dissolve. And we can all satisfy our creative requirements and decide if we like the dissolve better than the wipe. Playback one, followed by our dissolve to the end of the scene on playback two. I'd rather prefer the dissolve myself. But I'd like to add one second to the end of the scene. Now I'll simply select record. And the whole sequence will be recorded exactly as you saw it rehearsed. Plus one second. What are some of the general trends in videotape production today? A recent survey came up with these statistics. 53% is on tape. 29% is on film, and 18% is produced live. However, film is used for 85% of prime time productions. In summary, the advantages of videotape are speed of shooting, editing, and completion, instant replay to see as you go, superb picture quality, superior sound quality, ability to combine all types of existing visuals, tape, film, slides, art cards, and live action all at once. Ability to accurately control and duplicate color. Tape is more durable and offers more replays. Commenting on the art of videotape editing is Bill Orr, president of CMX. In the world of visual entertainment, one of the more challenging jobs, and the job that we're interested in here at CMX Systems, is that of editing. Putting together the jigsaw puzzle of words and music and pictures into a finished product is tough. To do it takes a large dose of creativity and technology and perseverance. 
It's important to remember that without editing, there's no final product, only bits and pieces. In evaluating either medium, it must be remembered that tape both supplements and competes with film. In tape and film, it's a combination of good production concepts, pre-production and production planning, and effective cost control that determines the success or failure of your program. It's the end result, the effectiveness of the visual and oral communication that makes a production great. The viewer doesn't care how the images were produced, just so they satisfy his cravings for images with impact. We can make Sally Struthers dance in front of herself and sing with herself as though she were a trio. And we can fill up the studio without ever seeing a stage hand. We can make magic. Steel. For strength, durability, performance. At one third off. Steel. For exceptional puncture resistance. At one third off. Steel. The guts of Ward's Grappler 2. Montgomery Ward's Grappler 2 throws two steel belts between you and danger. And it's on sale now at one third off the regular price. Big, deep tread and savings to match. Ward's Grappler 2 White Wall. No matter how you look at it, it's a steal.